What's going on guys, Balkan Architect here and in today's video we're going to be talking about the structure inside of your walls in Revit. So when it comes to creating walls in Revit, usually you just place all of the walls and then you think you're done. Well, actually in reality, walls aren't simply just walls. There are some structural elements inside of those walls. So even if we do have perhaps a brick wall or something like that, usually you're going to have some concrete columns inside of the wall uh, hidden away that kind of add to the structure of the building and make everything more rigid and stable and stronger. Uh, also, we have some beams running the length of your uh, floors, uh, where the floor meets the wall and so on. And for example, above windows, you're usually going to have some sort of uh, concrete beams or something like that that kind of holds the upper portion of the wall from falling into the window opening and so on. So a lot of these things are kind of overlooked, especially by beginners that are working in Revit. They're really excited because they can place a wall and they're, then they're done. Uh, but in this video, I, I decided to kind of show you how to add all of those structural elements inside of uh, Revit walls. And it's actually quite easy. It isn't that difficult, but it is something that, uh, that needs to be maybe talked about a, a bit more here in the Revit community. Uh, now, before I get into that, if you're really interested in learning Revit in depth, I have both beginner, intermediate, as well as advanced level courses on my website, balkanarctic.com. That's going to be the first link in the description just below the video, so check it out if you're interested. I've got over 90 hours of content there. I have some templates, uh, Revit templates for sale as well, if you're interested in that. And then also, if you would like to get access to all of my Revit project files, I've got a vast project library uh, for all of my tutorials and student projects and so on. Well, all of that is available on my website or on my Patreon page, and uh, that's going to be the second link in the description. So check that out if you're interested. Okay, so without any further ado, let's get straight into Revit. And here we are in Revit. So this is the project that I'm going to be using for the demonstration. If I just open up the 3D view, this is what that looks like. It's a simple beginner project and you can find it on my Patreon page. Uh, as I already mentioned, that's the second link in the description. Uh, now let's move out to level one and uh, let's get started from here. Uh, so the first thing that I, I suggest you do is to first explore your wall structure. Uh, so for your wall structure, usually you're going to have have something that's your structural material. Uh, now you can guess that and here for example if I select this wall uh, I can see that this uh, layer here is kind of the thickest layer and it's also kind of around the interior of the building and usually that's where the structural layer is going to be. It's going to be somewhere in the uh, kind of on the interior side of the building and it's going to be one of the thickest layers if not the thickest one uh, in your building. Uh, and of course the be better way to, to, to determine that is to just select your wall, uh, go here into edit type, go into structure, expand that menu or edit and here we can see that the uh, structural layer is the, this metal stud layer uh, and it's 15.2 uh, centimeters. Now, with that information, we know that we can fit a 15.2 centimeter uh, concrete column inside of this particular uh, wall. Uh, so, let's get started with that column and then also we're going to be covering beams as well. Uh, so the next step you need to do is go here to the structure tab, go to the structural column, CL is the shortcut, open that up and check out what we have here. Uh, so for example in this case we only have this universal uh, column, it's a steel column and if you want to use steel columns feel free to use it. Uh, but in this case, I actually want a concrete one. So let's go here into load family. That's going to open up the kind of the the the, the family library. Scroll down and find the structural columns. Open up that menu. Find the concrete ones, and then here we should have a rectangular, or actually let's go with a square uh, column. Next, I'm just going to hit open. And there we go. So we have our square column. Uh, now, by default, it's going to uh, enter just some basic dimensions. But as we said, we do have already a dimension, which we will be following. So we have to go here into edit type, duplicate this one, and let's call this one. Uh, it's 152. Or yeah, it's 152 or 15.2. So that's something like this. Click OK, 
there we go and then you just type in here 15.2 click OK so now if I zoom in over here as you can see I can place that column and uh, now before placing the columns uh, you have to make sure that you've kind of uh, checked off uh, a few important uh, settings so first uh, here in the placement you want this to be a vertical column that's the first one to check next we have the depth option here and you want to switch that to height uh, and also you want to connect it to either level uh, either level 2 or 3 or 4 depending on uh, what type of a structure you're modeling here I actually want to go I think up to level 3 you can always double check that here if you open up the elevation for example yeah I actually want to go up to level 3 so let's go back here into level 1 go to column vertical height level 3 uh, and yeah that should be it for now so uh, you're going to notice that it's really hard to place it so what they like to do is kind of place it off to the side like this then zoom in use the AL or for align you can also find it here on the modify tab here we have a line uh, then you want to hover kind of here near the layers hit the tab key until you can select the kind of the the layer that's the edge of your structural layer and you can kind of lock it in like that same thing here use the tab key lock it in and there we go we have our column uh, also what I like to do is give it a different hatch pattern so let's go here into edit type and here uh, oops sorry not edit type but the properties panel and here we should have the concrete cast in place so the structural material and then you can open that up and just change the cut pattern from this awful concrete one to the diagonal crosshatch 1.5 millimeter that's what I prefer to use and this is what that looks like if I change the scale to something like 1 to 50 we can see that even better now once you have that column in its proper place you can simply use the copy tool uh, find its corner like this and then you can copy it to any other part of the building where you want to have it so for example once we have it like this uh, for example in my country uh, let me just select both of these uh, you should place these at every six meters at least so I'm just going to go here to copy go to multiple extend it like this type in 600 there we go we have one set again 600 we have a second set and then finally I'm just going to select this one go to copy select its corner here try to find a corner there now if you miss don't worry about it again just using the simple align tool and using the tab key to find the correct place that's going to do the trick same thing goes here so select it go to copy go to here place it there again it's kind of off to the side but just using the align tool we can simply place it in its correct place and again let's copy it over here as you can see it's quite difficult to place it correctly so you will have to use the align tool with that tab feature uh, also if I turn off the thin lines you'll see kind of that these can be a little bit thicker and there we go now we have the columns in our walls perfect uh, now moving forward let's then talk about beams so for beams it's a, a fairly s straightforward uh, approach just like columns you go to the structure tab you go to the beam uh, again we only have the universal steel beam loaded in so let's go here to load family uh, here we're in the concrete but this is structural columns you have to go back and find structural framing and open that up again find concrete and this will be a simple rectangular beam click OK and there we go uh, now here for this beam again we only have a couple of types so I'm just going to add it to this type and duplicate it and let's call this one again uh, 152 by 200 which is kind of the standardized they mentioned for uh, for not, not really for uh, the beams but for the thickness of your uh, of your floor and then you you basically kind of fit in the beam in that same place so let me just click OK here change here the the, the width to 150 or 15.2 and then the height to 20 and then click OK okay so once we have this done uh, now we can place these uh, so what I suggest you do is uh, go f to level 2 because this is just going to be above that here we go okay this is the ceiling plan you don't want that you want the actual level 2 plan floor plan there we go and here we can see those columns 
going through this uh, wall, which is perfect. Uh, and then finally, uh, let's go here to beam uh, and uh, you want to place it uh, and you simply go here from one column to the other and there we go. Now you're going to get that little warning that says that you can't really see that beam and that's okay actually in this case. So I'm just going to place all of these beams just like that. Here, let's place it like this. Okay, obviously here you would have to add multiple, uh, a few more columns here, and of course more beams, uh, but just for kind of the purposes of this tutorial, let's just add them like this. Now, once you have placed them, what they suggest you do is go here to the section. So here on the quick access toolbar, we can create a section and let's create one going like this. Open that section up, and here you can see we have that beam. And as you can see, it kind of matches up with the uh, floor. Now let's switch this to fine level of detail and then let me talk about something else which is kind of uh, making sure that this uh, that this beam cuts through the wall and also making sure that this uh, column cuts through the wall w in which is on. So you don't want Revit to count this uh, column position both as a column and also as a wall because then it would kind of double the material So what you want to do is go here to modify go to join geometry and then join these two up uh, Now uh, let me go here into realistic Maybe it's easier to see that yeah, and then you just want to go like that now here as you can see it doesn't want to join but hopefully it will join these two. So you just need to make sure that uh, when you have these intersection points, as you can see, one wall kind of goes all the way through to the edge and the other one only goes up to here. So basically this column is hosted on this wall. So if I try to join it with this one, it's going to give me an error message. But if I try to join it with, oops, with this one, it's going to work. And then you kind of figure that out. Okay, so this one is here this one is there and so on. Uh, now you can use the same thing here in the section uh, so you can just join up the, the column and uh, uh, so I like to join the beam up with the floor and here we do seem to have a, a, an issue so let's again switch this to oops to realistic. So we seem to have a floor that's kind of going through that beam and you don't want that so let's go here to the join geometry tool, expand it and go to switch join order and now if we go like that as you can see it's going to switch and the column is the kind of the main element there and we can do the same thing here so join geometry, join it like that, join it like this, okay and then again switch join order, perfect. So that's the, the that's the basic approach when it when it comes to creating these. Uh, and then finally, for your windows, what you can do is go here into level one, uh, find the window, uh, and then uh, for your beams, let's go here to structure, structural beam, and here we have to kind of play around a little bit. Uh, unfortunately, kind of placing these can be quite uh, quite tricky. So uh, we can set it here to uh, level one for example and then let's try to kind of follow that center line which is really useful to have and then let's place that beam like this and of course it's going to give us an error message because it's way down below and then what you need to do is go to the 3d view in this case and then we have to find that beam which is kind of annoying okay here it is Okay, that was a lot easier than what I expected. Uh, now we have to bring it up here above the window. So if I select the window, uh, the we should have a head height, which is this over here, 240. So 240 plus the 20 centimeter height of that beam. Uh, so that means that if I, okay, I lost the beam. There we go. So that means that the beam should be at 260. So let's just go here when we select the beam, which is here, you can also go to wireframe to see it easier. Here we go. Uh, so just give it that offset. So that's 260 and then repeat that for the end level offset. And now here it's above that door. Uh, now it seems to look perfectly fine, uh, but I do suggest that you just double check that by going to level one and then creating a section through that and opening up that section, uh, setting the detail level to fine 
And yeah, uh, everything seems to be in order. And again, uh, just make sure to go here to join geometry and join that beam with the wall. So the lines are proper. Okay, same thing goes with this one. Okay, and again, we have to kind of switch the join order here. Perfect. So there we go. That's how we can uh, place these uh, beams above the windows. Uh, now, uh, you might not be sure how wide it should be. So I think in this other section here, if I switch this one to wireframe, here we can see the position of that, uh, of that beam. And uh, what you can do is perhaps go here to align the dimension, go to the edge of the window and the edge of the beam and just measure that out and then you can just double check if everything is up to the standard. So maybe this should be 30 here and then this one, I guess you have to extend in that case. There we go. So it's 30 on both sides. Uh, so just make sure to kind of follow that and you can use the same approach to kind of copy this around. And once you have it once, you can just go here to copy, find the center line of the window. As you can see, that's this vertical line that goes all the way through the top. And then I can just copy that to the center line here. And I have managed to place it a little bit above. Okay, <laughs> let's just use the align tool to drop that down. Perfect. And then you can repeat that for the door and so on. Uh, make sure to join that beam with the wall. Okay, that's going to be harder than, uh, than it looks, but anyways, uh, you get the point. So that's how you add all of these kind of uh, structural elements inside of your uh, inside of your rabbit roofs. So I hope you have learned something new, and I hope this was a kind of interesting topic to explore when it comes to working in Revit. Uh, tell me, please, in the comment section below, do you have maybe a better approach when it comes to this workflow? I'm keen to learn uh, new different uh, approaches every day. And uh, also, if you're interested in learning Revit a little bit uh, better in depth, I have both beginner, intermediate, as well as advanced level courses on my website, balkanarctic.com. So make sure to check it out if you're interested in that. Also, there you can find uh, my Revit templates. And if you're looking for my Revit project files, like this file, as well as all of my other project files, over 500 files so far, probably, uh, well, all of those are available on my Patreon page. That's the second uh, link in the description. Okay, so that's pretty much it. Thank you for watching. Make sure to subscribe, like, and share this video, and I'll be back with another Balkan Arctic tutorial in a few days. Have a nice day.